Hey everyone, and welcome to the next video in the Simplify OpenTX series. Today we'll be continuing with logical switches and looking at the AND, OR, and XOR functions. Hi guys, today we'll be continuing with our logical switches. We'll be looking at AND, OR, and XOR. XOR stands for exclusive OR, but we'll get to that shortly. So what we'll do is we'll bring up OpenTX Companion and we'll, we'll look at the, the AND and the OR first together. So if you remember last time when we were comparing A to X, we used this AND switch up here. And um, that basically does the same thing as the AND logic. So when we have an AND, we're comparing everything here. And if everything here is true or enabled, then this logical switch will also light up. So if we only have one thing in here, which really wouldn't be a good use of it, if that one thing was enabled, then it would work. So you know, let's show it. So we'll stick SA in the middle, we'll bring up the simulator, SA is in the middle, we'll put it on the outside, it's disabled. There you go, it's, an, it's now enabled. So that's the very simplest version of this. As, as I say, you won't really ever use it like that. It's for comparing two things. So if then we stick SB in that position, we'll now see if SA is in the middle, which it was working before, but now we need to put SB in this position too for it to work. And it will only work when both of these conditions are met. So that's why it's an AND. It this has to be here and this has to be here. And you can also go one step further by adding another switch here, which can also be logical switch, yeah, anything you want. So you can effectively have free and conditions to be met before this logical switch activates. So that's that's basically what an AND does. I mean, I do have an example, but we're gonna combine it with an OR so we'll come back to that in a sec. What I'll do now is show you what the OR does. So if you remember, we're comparing this and this, and both of them have to be true for this switch to be enabled. With an OR, it could be that or that, or both. It doesn't matter. So if we simulate it with exactly the same conditions as we had before, we can see SA is in the middle, so it works. If we put SB up the top, it still works. If we move SA out of the enabling position, it still works. And it's not until neither of these switches are in an enabling position that it's, it stops being active. So if, if you have two conditions, you don't care which is met um, to enable the switch, then you'd use an OR. So that or that needs to be in the right place for that switch to work. So again, this is, this is all really fairly s simple stuff. It's when you combine things later on that it gets a bit more complicated. So what I do is, is make a, or do a real world example now of when you may use an AND or an OR. So what we're gonna be looking at is an arming switch effectively. So we're gonna check for a low throttle we're going to have an arm switch and we're going to have a pre-arm switch. So the first thing that we'll do is add our AND and we're going to use SF in the down position and SB in the middle position. So this is our arming switch and this is our pre-arm. So if I simulate, we can see SF's in the arm position and the pre-arm is also in the arm position. So for both for that to be active, we need our arm switch in the bottom and the pre-arm switch. As I say, this is really simple. If you were really doing a pre-arm, you'd want to make sure that you weren't armed before you enabled the pre-arm. So there's logic we are missing out here, but this is just for an example. So you can see here, we're in the arm position, we're in the pre-arm position. Sorry, I was going to show you on it and the logical switch is now enabled because both of those conditions are met. So that's the AND. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use an A less than X, which we went over in the last video. If you didn't see the last video, I'll put um, a little link to it 
in the top right hand corner uh, so what we're going to do is check our throttle there we go so we use our throttle so while i'm here i'll just show you the difference between these you'll see here you've got eye throttle and throttle so what throttle is is the actual gimbal stick and what the eye is is the input so there they are two different things this is the physical throttle position on the gimbal whereas this is the input of called throttle um which could actually be do different things i have a model where i have a throttle input but it's actually controlled by either a momentary switch on that i have on the back of my transmitter or the slider on the side of the transmitter so the input is still called throttle but it doesn't actually use those physical components on the transmitter so that's that's the difference is it's using the source throttle but the input is also called throttle so that's the difference it, sh it shows it with the the um the i for input and then just thr is the source so what we're going to do here is we are going to make sure that that is lower than minus 96 that's a fairly decent number so now if we simulate we can see logical switch 2 is active which is great if we move throttle up it disables it so that switch there is literally just checking that the throttle is down so the final part that we're going to do here is we're going to add our or so what we need to do is we need to make sure that all this is active so what we need to do is have our logical condition free to make sure that it stays armed until we disarm it so what we're going to do is we're going to add logical sw logical switch to logical switch three which is itself so if either of these two are active this will be active and what we need to have is logical switch one so it will only work if the that's in the right place so if i simulate now we'll see i'll disarm it so we're completely disarmed now we'll stick the throttle up so three here would be our arming so if if three is not active we're disarmed when three is active we're armed so what we need to do is get our arm switch in the right position if we then lower the throttle you can see we're armed and if we raise the throttle you can see the throttle one is now disabled but we're still armed so that will all the time we're flying we're still armed here if we disable this we're disarmed so that's a that's a really simple arming switch um i mean I'll, I'll, i can show with us you could use a special function on logical switch free which this is not the best way to do it so if you override channel minus 100 and on if we simulate that you can see the the throttle channel is down why is that doing that i've done it the wrong way around haven't i needs to be not logical switch free there we go right so we've, we're disarmed if i move the throttle it does nothing i arm it it still won't do anything if i lower the throttle then it becomes active and it will stay active all the time until we dis disable the arm or the pre-arm switch again you wouldn't ideally you shouldn't really use this because if you reverse channels it doesn't take it into consideration it's just a minus 100 the best way to do an arm switch is by actually changing the input so if as i say i've got another video i'll put a link up it's rather than going into through this video so that is our, <clears throat> our and and our or so let's get rid of this lot the last one we're going to look at today is XOR, which is exclusive OR. Now, if you remember, when we had an OR, it meant that either of these two things could be true and it would work, or both of them. With an explicit OR, it has to be either this one or this one. It can't be both. That's, that's the main difference between 
a standard or an, an explicit or. So at the moment, you can see that SF and SB are both in the enabled position, but the logical switch isn't working. So if we take SB out, you see it's cut, it um, enables, but if we take SF out, it also disables because there's nothing completing the logic. So if we put SB back, it, it works. So basically, as I say, it has to be, this is true or this is true, but not both. With a standard OR, both can be true, but with an ex exclusive OR, it has to be either of them, but not both. Right, so as an example of this, what we can do is have a um, feedback for a prearm switch. So what I'm going to do is explicit OR, sorry, I, sometimes I make the mistake and call them explicit OR because it has to explicitly be <laughs> one of these two, but not both, but it's exclusive OR. So so what we're going to do is we'll have SF in that position, SB in that position. So SB is our prearm and SF is armed. So what this is saying is that if either of these switches are in the correct position, but not both, it will activate this. So what we're going to do is play a sound so we know we're in the pre-armed position. So what we can do is go to logical switch one, play sound, beep, every three seconds. So what we'll have now is because if we have nothing, nothing active at all, so we've just got our transmitter on, we're in our completely disarmed state, then we could go into prearm and we'll have a beep letting us know that we're in the prearm position. And then once we arm, the beep will stop. So that, that's just a little example that I, that I, um, I came up with as, again it's, it's, it's actually getting harder to come up with examples for these because as the the actual um functions sorry the actual functions here get a bit more complex they they work best combined with other functions so coming up with examples is getting tricky so there's a bit of a ropey example but it's an example so just to wrap up, we, we now understand or hopefully we understand what AND or an explicit OR does. Um, as I say, they're, they're not, again, overly complex. They, they're all very similar um, logic. It, they, it's just the way it handles them is slightly different. So as again, just a quick wrap up. AND is both of these, but it has to be both. OR is either or both. And it um, exclusive or is that or that but not both that's that's the basics to it so i hope you guys found this video useful if you did i'd appreciate a fun thumbs up uh, please um, help my channel out by subscribing and if you click the notification bell you'll get an alert when the next video comes up in the series um, if you want to leave a thumbs down that's absolutely fine but as i always say if you do leave a thumbs down please drop a comment to say why the feedback is really helpful. But yep, thank you guys very much. Get out there, fly your models like you stole them, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, goodbye. <laughs>